Thank you. General Petraeus, uh, last week in anticipation of this hearing, I sent an urgent e email asking my constituents and other Americans if they were serving on this committee, what is the one question they would pose to you? There was an extraordinary response with more than 5,000 questions submitted. These emails and phone calls express deeply held frustrations about the war in Iraq and reflect the concerns of millions across the nation who feel their opinions and concerns are cast aside by the Bush administration. I want to thank everyone who responded and submitted a question for today's hearings. While many of the respondents rightfully highlighted the bravery of our troops, a majority of the emails expressed a strong desire to see a withdrawal of American soldiers from Iraq and an end to this five-year war that has cost our nation so dearly. Most of the questions boil down to this. General, we often hear President Bush and Senator Kane say we must win in Iraq. What is the definition of winning? What would a military victory look like that was sufficient enough to allow us to begin leaving? Then, in a horrific turn of events, two of my constituents, Esther and Len Wolfer of Boca Raton, Florida, learned that this past Sunday their son had been killed for this war. Major Stuart Wolfer was a 36-year-old reservist on his second tour. He was married with three young children ages 5, 3, and 20 months. His family was relieved that he was in the green zone, for they hoped he would be safe there. He was not. I spoke to Mr. Wolfer yesterday, last night, who asked me to ask you simply, for what? For what had he lost his son? So allow me to combine, if you will, the questions from the people that responded to me and Mr. Wolfer. What has all this been for? And please, respectfully, don't tell us, as you told Senator Warner yesterday, to remove a brutal dictator. That's not good enough. There are many dictators in the world. For what did Stuart Wolfer and the other 4,024 sons and daughters die for? And how will we define victory so that we can bring this never-ending war to a close? And if I will, when Mr. Burton asks for a definition of what is failure, we get a litany of items. But when Mr. Ackerman, Ackerman asks what's the definition of victory, we get little. Please tell us, General, what is winning? Well, first, of all, first of all, Congress, let me tell you that uh, what we are fighting for is national interests. Uh, it is interests uh, that, as I stated, uh, have to do with uh, Al Qaeda, a sworn enemy of the United States and the free world. Uh, it has to do with the uh, possible spread of sectarian conflict uh, in Iraq, a conflict that had engulfed that country and had it on the brink of civil war. Uh, it has to do with regional stability uh, of a region that is of critical importance uh, to the global economy, and it has to do uh, with certainly the uh, influence uh, of, of Iran, uh, another uh, obviously very important uh, element in that region. Uh, in terms of what it is that we are trying to achieve, uh, I think simply it is a country that is at peace with itself and its neighbors. Uh, it is a, a country that can uh, defend itself, uh, that has a government that is reasonably representative uh, and broadly responsive to its citizens, uh, and a country that is in, involved in, engaged in, uh, again, the global economy. Uh, Ambassador Crocker and I, for what it's worth, have typically seen ourselves as minimalists. Uh, we're not after the Holy Grail in Iraq. We're not after Jeffersonian democracy. Uh, we're after conditions that would allow our soldiers to disengage, and that is, in fact, what we are doing uh, as we achieve progress, uh, as we have with the surge, and that is what is indeed allowing us to uh, withdraw the surge forces. Uh, again, well over one quarter of our ground combat power, five of 20 brigade combat teams, plus two Marine battalions and the Marine Expeditionary Unit uh, by the end of July. Thank you.